Grub Home drivers are making thousands of dollars every single month. I know that because I have made thousands of dollars myself as a part-time Grubhub driver. I've used that money to help accelerate my debt payoff. So it's really important to me that I make the most amount of money possible. So I'm going to share with you the tips that I use to maximize my earnings under Grubhub's pay structure that considers time, mileage, and tips. Hi, I'm Shane of The Wealth Vibe and I create videos to help you eliminate debt, grow your income, and build wealth. In this video, I'm sharing my strategies for how I maximize my earnings under Grubhub's new pay structure. Grubhub changed their pay structure back in June 2019 to now calculate your earnings based off of time, mileage, and tips. So I'm going to get straight into how I maximize my earnings as soon as you share this video. It's really important that you share this video out to other people so that we can help everyone as Grubhub drivers and it also helps my videos with the YouTube algorithm and I would really appreciate it because that means more people are here to learn about the tips that I have to share and that means that there's more money that's going to be made for all of us as Grubhub drivers. So I really appreciate that and now let's get straight into the video. I recently shared a video detailing Grubhub's new pay structure in detail. So if you're interested in checking that out, you can check it out at the cards above here. But just to give you a little overview about Grubhub's new pay structure that was implemented back in June 2019, the pay structure now is based off of three components. It's based off of your time, your estimated time that Grubhub thinks that you'll spend collecting the order at a restaurant and also the amount of time that you'll spend driving to deliver the order to the customer. The second component is mileage. Grubhub is estimating the mileage that you will drive from where your location is to the restaurant and then from the restaurant to the customer's delivery point. And then the last component is tips. This has always been the same and you always will get paid 100% of the tips that are given to you. So now I'm going to get into my tips for how to maximize earnings under this new pay structure because it's really important that you consider a few things. If you watch any of my other videos, you know that I am a cherry picker and I provide a lot of tips to the other cherry pickers out there on how to identify a good order to accept for Grubhub. And so you might be wondering, under this new pay structure, is it even worth cherry picking? So as I've mentioned, under the new pay structure, I don't cherry pick as often, but I do still cherry pick. And the reason why I still cherry pick is because with this new pay structure, you do not have a set base pay. So you still are going to be sent some really, really low ball offers. Now with the old pay structure, I never really saw $3 orders that often, but with the new pay structure, you're going to see $3 orders a little bit more often, especially if the person is not tipping. Because the only thing that you can rely on at that point is the mileage, the estimated mileage and the estimated time. And so if Grubhub is estimating that the mileage will be very short and if they're also estimating that the time will be very short, then you have to rely then on the tip. But if the customer does not provide a tip, we're talking about only a couple of dollars now, maybe not even sometimes depending on if the, you know, the order is next door to you. So there might be instances where you still have to cherry pick. And so you might be thinking like, well, if the order is really close by and I don't have to drive that far and if the time is going to be very short, why not just accept that order? And that might be something that you want to consider accepting. Because the time and mileage are estimated, it's likely that the estimation will be off a little bit. There is no telling that if you go into the restaurant that they're going to really be quick. Normally, maybe that restaurant is very quick, but it just so happens that when you go in there that time, that restaurant is taking like 30 minutes. But Grubhub will have no clue that this is really happening and they won't compensate you for the 30 minutes, even though they originally estimated that it will be a five minute wait time. 
So there are times where you will reject some lowball orders even under this new pay structure because at first glance it might seem like it's a good idea to do because it's going to be really quick because the time estimated is short and the distance travel will also be short. But in the end you never know until you actually do it. So you'll have to keep some of these things in mind. In the past, I provided some tips on how to maximize your pay as a Grubhub driver. And some of these things still stand and probably apply even more under this new pay structure than before. And these tips are really going to help you to maximize the amount of pay that you're able to make from Grubhub. So like before, you really want to pay attention to the amount of miles you are going to have to travel to deliver an order. And so although now Grubhub is paying for you to actually drive to the restaurant, whereas before they never pay for that, you don't want to pay or you don't want to be driving several miles to a restaurant and several miles from a restaurant to the customer's house. So the maps are really, really important. You're going to have to get to know your region very well. Because one of the things that has happened with this new pay structure or with the new app being on the iOS and the Android platform natively is that they have taken out the address as part of the initial order screen that you see. And if you know your area really well, you should be able to eyeball the map without the address and know exactly where the restaurant is and exactly where the customer is in relation to where you are starting at. So you're going to have to quickly assess the maps to see, okay, how long is it really going to take me to get this entire order completed in terms of driving distance? And the reason why this is important because the more miles you put on the car, that means more wear and tear to your car and more maintenance that you'll have to do. And obviously that means more money that you'll have to spend in gas. And all these things eat at your profits. And so you might likely see a large payout on an order of let's say $15 on an order. But a lot of that might be paid due to mileage. You don't want to be paid just off of mileage. Your goal really is to get paid mostly off of tips rather, just, rather than just your mileage. So you want to make sure that you're assessing the maps to make sure that you're not driving far distances to the restaurant, from the restaurant, or anywhere along the process. You wanna make sure that those distances are relatively short. So make sure that you learn your local area, get familiar with the maps, so that way you don't have to rely on the addresses. But one quick tip that I do have to offer is that after you accept the order, Grubhub will then show you the addresses. So you don't have to go too long in the dark without knowing exactly where you're going. So once you accept the order, you'll get to plug in the addresses into your GPS and get a better idea of how long or what the distance will be to and from each location that you have to stop at. And then if you feel like it's too far of a distance to travel, then you can reject the order afterward. Because the penalty is the same, whether you reject straight away or if you reject after accepting, you still get the same penalty of rejection. So it really doesn't matter in terms of the ratings that you get from Grubhub. With this new pay structure, you also want to be mindful of the time that you're spending with each order. Although you're now getting paid based off of estimated time for waiting and for driving to a delivery point, you still want to make sure you're not spending too much time because at the end of the day, you're only getting paid 13 cents per minute. That is not a lot of money. So you don't want to spend 60 minutes or an hour getting paid 13 cents per minute to wait on an order. And so you need to be mindful of this as well. So in order to combat this, I highly suggest that you start to get familiar with the different restaurants in your area and know what their wait times typically are. And if you know that this is a restaurant that has a horrible wait time, you might want to avoid it. 
or you want to call in ahead of time and ask them, hey, what's going on with this order? I received an order for Grubhub. This is the customer's name. Is it going to be ready by the time I get there? I'll be there in five minutes. You know, just provide them some information so that they can provide you with some information so that you can make an educated decision about the amount of time that you're going to spend on the order. Because once again, you're only getting paid 13 cents per minute. That is not a lot of money. So don't waste all your time doing these orders just because you are getting some change, literally coins <laughs> thrown at you. So make sure that you're not spending a lot of time doing each order. I also recommend that you pay attention to the total payout for an order. Under the old pay structure, I would recommend that you reject an order that was less than $7. Now, in this new pay structure, I've been seeing orders ranging between $10 to $13, but I still have that $7 minimum per order. And you'll have to decide what that minimum is for you. Is $7 worth it for you? Maybe $5 is worth it for you if it's going to be one of those quick orders. By having a benchmark in terms of the total payout amount, that will allow you to make really quick decisions about which orders you want to accept versus which orders you don't want to accept. It'll take a few weeks for you to figure out what that minimum dollar amount should be for you. You'll want to factor in a few different things like the amount of time that you have to wait, the distance that you have to travel, the things that you have to do typically during the times that you're working, do you have to fight traffic, and all those things. You'll want to factor those things in and come up with a mi minimum that really is meaningful to you because you don't want to be working for pennies because at the end of the day, you might get stuck in a situation where you are only doing one order per hour. And so if you're doing one order per hour at a pay of about $5, you're making less than minimum wage. So make sure that you pick a minimum that you feel comfortable with if that is the only order that you're going to do for the hour. So that's something to keep in mind as well to make sure that you're maximizing the amount of money that you make as a Grubhub driver. The way that you're going to make the most amount of money with Grubhub is through tips. So tips is the one thing in the Grubhub pay structure that is going to really add up a lot of money for you. The good thing is that you can see exactly how much a customer is tipping ahead of time. Even before you even get to the restaurant, you can see exactly how much a customer is tipping. So to find out how much a customer has tipped for this order, you can go to the customer's profile and then you scroll up a little bit and you'll be able to see the amount that they tip. So in order to maximize the amount of money that you're making via tips, you can cherry pick based off of tips. Most customers tip ahead of time. I would say about 95% of customers tip ahead of you even delivering the order to them. So you can cherry pick based off of the amount of tip that a customer has provided. Maybe you feel that you should always get a $5 tip. So you might decide that if someone has tipped you less than $5, then you want to reject their order. And you might wanna wait for a tipper or a customer who tips very well. And that is up to you. It's okay to do that. It's an option that Grubhub provides to us. And because most customers tip ahead of time, you're able to see if someone is likely going to give you a tip or not. In my experience of doing Grubhub for the past almost two years, I have noticed that if someone has not given a tip in the app, they are most likely not going to give you a tip when you see them in person. It just rarely ever happens. And so don't set your hopes up to think that you're going to be able to provide such high quality service that they're going to give you additional money. So now that you know that most customers do tip ahead of time, you might be thinking, well, if I don't cherry pick the tippers or based off of tip, how can I even maximize my tips any further? So. Most of the time, you can't maximize your tips much, much more. But in my experience, 
there are times where someone has already tipped within the app and then they will still give you a cash tip in person. And so I have gotten anywhere from five to $20 in person in cash after someone has already tip within the app and sometimes they've already tipped pretty well within the app. So I would highly recommend that you still provide really high quality service because you never know whether that person is going to add a little extra to the tip that they've already provided you and that will increase the amount of money that you make overall. I have some additional tips that have nothing to do with the new pay structure that is going to help you to maximize the amount of profit that you're able to make as a Grubhub driver. If you're interested in checking it out, just click on this video right here. It's gonna break down a few things that you need to keep in mind as a Grubhub driver to maximize your earnings. And I hope that you appreciate this video. And if you did, make sure that you share it out to other Grubhub drivers because we all want to make the most amount of money possible. Thanks for watching and I hope that you subscribe so I can see you in the next one. Bye.